Я такой. Ронда Ривз. Спасибо, что поделились платформу, которую вы делились с нами. В general, I, it was impactful because I think all of us as individuals that are in the field of learning found it to be an interesting topic. And obviously given the location and place where you're going to present this, there's going to be people that already have an interest in it. So that, that right off the bat gives you uh, an incentive or an opportunity to connect with people like I thought your introduction was effective. It, lends itself to the credibility of what you're going to speak on, that way you don't have to spend that much time establishing that in the original speech itself, so well done in regards to that part. Your style of delivery and your charisma shows throughout the presentation, which I think is another part that engages everybody. You are a comfortable speaker, you speak in a friendly manner, and that automatically makes people want to listen. So I think everybody was engaged in the sense of the style of delivery of professionalism, uh, the way that you dressed, the way that you carried yourself was effective. From that standpoint, the one recommendation that I would make was just be careful with the clicker. I know that's one thing that I, I've been told several times from a professionally speaking standpoint. If you don't need the clicker, don't use it. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the pacing of your slides. If your slides are going to be frequent, then hold on to it. If they're not going to be frequent, then put it down. Okay. Whenever you're ready to use it again, then pick it back up. It also, it's also a good way to let people know, prepare for a change in topic or, or a new, new information that's about to be presented. So that just comes with your level of comfort with the timing of the slides. So if you want, need to put it down, put it down, because then it gives you the opportunity to use your hands for you know, everything you use them. Content-wise, the content was great. There was a lot of information. I think that's one thing that probably I could sense from everybody. Uh, because you, you spoke in a fast pace, It doesn't give people an opportunity to reflect on what you're saying before you're moving on to the next topic. Okay. So that's one thing I would recommend. It's difficult to judge because I know that you're trying to work on a 60-minute presentation, but you're working on the speaking portion. So I assume that there's other interactive aspects of the presentation that are going to be yeah, included within. Yeah, I need to within. stop with each one. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's why it's hard to say. You did. You know, it's hard to determine how your how it's going to come out in terms of your actual presentation. But do keep in mind, yeah, you know, for every, from what I heard, every, you know, it's one of the reasons why in Toastmasters we can find seven minute speeches is because that's how long a person will pay attention to a single topic for their brain to concentrate. <laughs> so switch it up or, or to take a moment to pause and, and use a simple story, something that is like a palate cleanser for the mind that can let you start thinking again on the next topic. Um, things that stood out to me learning equals change. The, the style of learning is organic. New technology does not equal better learning. Learning shouldn't be forced. Learning shouldn't be obligated. So I don't know about everybody else, and hopefully you get feedback from them, but those are the things that stood out to me. So I would emphasize those areas, those key points that people uh, speak of that, that really remember. Those are the things that they're going to really remember. So use that as the focal point, and then the rest is the support, because those are the things that people will remember. The other suggestions that I have is you spoke about the six-step formula at the beginning, and then you spoke about other things, and then you came to the, the design map. So I think whenever you, say, whenever you say anything about your numbering these things, it's a six-step program, people are always expecting to hear what that is immediately after that. So if you don't go to that, then people start getting confused because they're like, well, what happened to the six steps, where are they at? So I would just say, it's a six-step formula, I'm going to address some other things, and then I'll go to the design map where we'll learn these six steps, and then that way they don't have to be trying to figure out what are the six steps. I don't know, if, did I miss one, did I miss the beginning, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, for the design map itself, my one, my one suggestion would be, uh, you use different examples for each different section, maybe have one very simple example and take us through the process for that one simple example. And it can be, it, it, that's where there's an opportunity to use humor, for example, so you can say, you know, I started my own lemonade stand, and here's how you would do it for starting a lemonade stand. Everybody knows that it's a simple thing, but it just makes it, it, makes it for, for an easy thing to follow. So 
you know, that, that could be like the beginning. If for my lemonade stand, I would do this, and then use the other examples that you have that are more business and more professional in nature. But like you said, within your presentation itself, if you attach uh, more complicated themes to a simple concept, then they can relate to that. So that's just a suggestion. Uh, and then, yeah, just maybe um, the one other thing, you know, and like I said, it was, it was done well, so I enjoyed it thoroughly. I think everybody enjoyed it. Would you say you enjoyed it? And it was a lot of, it was good information, it was a lot of information. I think maybe just making it a little bit more clear at the beginning as far as what the, the uh, call to action or what it is that you want people to get out of it, because I understood uh, it was for us to learn what blended design was, it was for us to understand the changes between a traditional and a blend, you know, blended design. Uh, it was also about a business impact, but I wasn't quite sure exactly which one it was that you really, really wanted this to, to take away from. And that might be, uh, that that's something that's going to depend on how, what it is that you're trying to present to the audience specifically. If it's just, you know, here's a blended learning, apply it to whatever you're going to do, or if it's more business driven, then maybe note that at the beginning. Like, this, this is what I really, really want to do. But like I said, it, it was well, very well delivered, enjoyable. It was fast paced, uh, so it made it a lot of information to take in. Uh, however, I enjoy hearing you speak, and I think that uh, we all got something out of it, which is the most important thing in any presentation. Did you learn something new? And I thoroughly enjoyed your comparison between the traditional um, and the blended learnings, and it gives you food for thought of you know, what is it that I'm learning, that I've been learning, and how I've been versus some other ideas, which is what I can come up with, and that's the innovative part that you wanted us to really, really keen on. So, thank you. So, what's it like giving in five minutes? <laughs>